Hello, I'm Richard Fieldhouse and I've been a GP locum for over 25 years. I've worked in around about 100 different practices in up to 30 a year. And I've been doing that since 1997. I've been a chairman of the National Association of Sessional GPs. And I want to talk about what the GP sense of purpose is. Why in general practice do we tend to have a value that we ascribe to ourselves? But how often are we actually setting ourselves up to fail? Now, this is a quick sort of tour, a buzz around what I think we should be doing about our sense of purposes in general practice and why I think we're actually currently setting ourselves up to fail. Now, of course, you probably already know the answer. Our sense of purpose in general practice is continuity of care. It's a unique selling point. We've been talking about it for years. We have a national conference. We go out of our way to do research into continuity and we can prove that there are certain benefits to it. It really helps us support the partnership model, which we hold so dearly and so closely to our hearts because it's such a unique selling point for us as doctors to have this sense of continuity of care. However, it does rather harm uh, us as GP locums, those many tens of thousands of us, up to 20,000 who work as GP locums. It sort of it can be used as a way for us to bash ourselves about it and other people to ask us, when are we going to get a second job? Why are we just a locum? We say that to ourselves. Now, a few years ago, the King's Fund did a deep dive into continuity of care and they actually found it to be two different things. They found it to be continuity of management record. So that's something that all of us can con contribute to all the time when we're doing general practice. A good patient narrative with good contemporaneous notes. So any of us can take off where the previous GP or clinician left off. But the King's Fund also... Uh, suggested that there are, there are a whole load of potential side effects of continuity of care that in general practice for some reason we haven't actually done any research on and haven't actually got any evidence for. I remember uh, over the years I've actually mentioned this to people in various high-ranking people in various medical organizations of why this is the case and the usual response is that they don't want to open that Pandora's box. But instead, we have possible things that the King's Fund has suggested, such as con uh, continuity can breed familiarity. And with that familiarity, we can become complacent. We can, might even be able to become contemptuous of our patients. And that can lead to dependency. There can be compassion fatigue. That is, is something to lead us to, towards burnout. The problem with the NHS, the issue the that the NHS has, the biggest, biggest problem is its workforce. And the problem that the workforce has is its welfare. So things like compassion fatigue, ego, ego depletion, all these sorts of things are really serious concerns, but we have not approached them in any scientific way. When as doctors, we should be doing that. And that leads us to feel guilty. And that leads us to feel that again, as GPs, we're just failing. And the trouble with all of that, by uh, with continuity, is that we just really just take it for granted. We just accept it as the thing, as the one thing we do as gen GPs. And, and of course, so many of us can't do that. And, and also by taking it for granted, are we doing it as best as we possibly can? Now, over the years as a GP locum, I've really enjoyed uh, and been quite flattered when patients have said to me, you know, Dr. Fieldhouse, you could be my usual GP. It's been so nice having you, doctor. Someone listening to me today, doctor. Some I've actually been able to, I couldn't otherwise get an appointment. Will you be staying here? And, and in some ways, I feel quite flattered by that. In other ways, I feel that um, I'm quite sad because I'm obviously going to have to let the patient down because I actually really enjoy working as a GP locum and I find it very fulfilling. But what's been really nagging me recently is actually I could have been doing it a lot better because... When I'm in that room with a patient and there's, they, they're used to their regular doctor, and, I, and, and rather than just two of us in the room today, the patient and, and myself, there's actually in spirit, there's a regular GP. So if, if the consultation is going well, the management's going well, and um, the, 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 the illness is, 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 is just going, is improving, then, then great. And, and if I actually thought about it, I could be there actually reinforcing how good the 
the care the care the patient's been having has been. I don't tend to do that. It's not because I've kind of been taking all of that for granted. But if the if the um, if the patient's uh, illness if their management isn't going to plan as it often doesn't do because you know illness you know, it, it changes and and instead that the I might then have a have a different approach. I might want to try different a different um, a therapeutic regime the patient then might might improve they might really like the fact that I've, I've thought of something different and I've actually understood and listened to them in a different way not in any in a necessarily better way but just in a different way and that's when a patient then asks me if I'm going to be their regular GP and and all I do is feel flattered by that was actually if I hadn't been taking continuity for granted I would be able to do things that actually continue to stabilize not destabilize that existing doctor patient relationship the ongoing continuity of relationship that the king's fund and we all know is really important so again we're taking it for granted that continuity just happens and that by being a partner or a salary gp um, and if you keep on seeing the same patient that's all we need to do and, and we really need to question that and there are actually some really clever things we can do uh, we as an organization um give give GP locums the ability to, to generate these locum patient profiles which actually it helps the patient the, the idea is the locums print these out laminate them stick them on the front desk and the patient rather than being told there's no GP today just a locum instead they can read in depth a rich narrative about the GP they're about to see and even on the B side of this is an explanation to the patient of actually what a GP locum is. They are a proper qualified doctor. There's a lot of positive things a GP locum can do for you while you're there. Please don't just think you need to make an appointment to see a proper doctor. Um, so actually although us as locums might ha not have that on long ongoing relationship when we do have, when we are there with the patient for that 10 or 15 minutes, we can nevertheless have a, a, a deep relationship. We can actually make um, that, that, that moment in time really, really count by doing some constructive, proactive things rather than just taking it for granted that because we don't, can't provide um, ongoing longitudinal relationship continuity, therefore we're kind of not proper GPs. There's a lot more we can do to make continuity better and work better for all our patients. So that's one aspect of our sense of purpose as, as, as GPs and so many of us will think of ourselves um, at the end of the day when maybe we're on holiday we're reflecting about our practice and uh, that we're thinking well am I a good GP well have I been doing much continuity I you know I've been really struggling this this last few months to actually provide that people have been away there's there's not many doctors around to help me I'm here there and everywhere I feel a real failure as a GP because I can't provide continuity and we're setting ourselves up to fail in general practice. There's a much, but there are, all, are alternatives. There's much more we can actually be doing. And it's like that parable of the, of the six blind men looking at the elephant. It's, it's having different perspectives. Now, there's this Hungarian turn of the century scientist, Jakob van Uxka, who came up with the, the concept of the umwelt. So this is how a creature sees its world. In the case of a tick, it's via the chemical gradient of sweat and vibration. That's how it sees its world. And bats look at it one way, dogs look at it together. Put that all together, and us as humans, you've got the umbugung. You've actually got the entire world, but none of us as individuals see the entirety of something. We only see a perspective of it. We all probably might be sitting here thinking, actually, no, I've got a very good perspective, thank you very much. But Actually, even our elect the electromagnetic, the visible spectrum, we can actually only see a thousandth of, of, of what is actually visible. Even as humans, we've got a narrow vision. And as different GPs see different patients, only by having those different perspectives do you actually get a fuller picture. So um, patients aren't born and live and die in just one place. They move around. And, and so the, their perspective changes, their context changes, and us as GPs, by moving around, can pick up those different contexts and bring that richness, that diversity, rather than a, a siloed way of working and thinking about patients, building up a picture through multiple opinions with good notes, good continuity of, of record, can actually really help with patient care, rather than taking it for, 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 
for granted, we can actually have different perspectives on patient's care. So seeing different GPs can be a good thing. And there's even some research out there to show that if you uh, have certain types of cancer, you're more likely to get it diagnosed if you see different GPs. But we just seem to be ignoring that, this research. We don't want to open this Pandora's box that somehow might make us question this, this continuity of care thing. I think in general practice, we sort of got blinkers in front of our eyes and we need to open those eyes and look at other alternatives because we need other ways to to have a think about the way we work as GPs as a positive career choice, not that we're continuing to fail because we can't provide continuity. So what about a third way then? Well, what about the actual sort of capacity about, about helping out struggling practices? Now, a lot of GPs spend their training in wonderful training practices. They get used to systems and processes. They have support. That's what we think partnership is going to be like. We're really going to get to know. But of course, many of us will end up working in lots of different practices. A lot of us will qualify as GPs and start working as locums. And um, and, 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 and then what happens? So the actual, but the actual reality is that whereas training practices tend to be at one end of the spectrum, at the other end of the spectrum, working in practices that are just really, really struggling, it can be a completely different picture. Their systems and processes can be very, very different, um, sometimes completely counterintuitive or the direct opposite of what we've been used to and what we're expecting. And that can lead us to all be working in a sense of in a position of informed underperformance. And that's very stressful when you have to do it. And, and when we are covering for practices, on one end of the spectrum, there are some, you know, kind of great proactive reasons why, why, why we might be covering because the GPs might be going off um, for a holiday or for study leave. And so the practices uh, are, are open minded, they're constructive, they're, they're thinking of they're thinking ahead and they're planning um, and, and those are practice generally, it's it's a bit easier to work in. There's a lot more support there. But then there are reasons why locums can be working practice because the practice has really been struggling to recruit a GP or someone's been off sick. They might have been underperforming without anyone else knowing. And it could be days, weeks, months later when you as a locum actually realise that the practice you've been supporting has actually got issues. But no one told you, perhaps because these are unknown unknowns. Maybe the practice didn't even know. Maybe a partner's even been off suspended and actually the practice will never even tell you that. You'll find that out from the patient. So often as locums, we can be working in this position of enforced underperformance and that can be really, really stressful. And what I often tell newly qualified GPs is please don't think yourself when you're working in this place that you're some sort of victim. Actually, I really think you can embrace this way of working. What you're doing is you're providing cover to patients who otherwise wouldn't have seen a GP. You can be you can be doing extra special things like doing, making some really good referrals. It, but if, if, those, if you hadn't have been there that day, those patients would have been effectively deprived of, 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 of GP care. You've done a good job. So when you're down the line when you're relaxing and you're having time to reflect and think about your work rather than think of yourself as some sort of failure or some sort of victim actually over the last few months there have been times when you're able to provide continuity of course even locums can provide that ongoing continuity relationship we can see the same patient more than once or twice but also we've given the patients a gp profile and actually we've had some really meaningful conversations with patients we were really there for them in that moment and also um, we would be able to give fresh different perspectives and also we would be able to support practices that otherwise wouldn't have been able to see a GP. So there are other ways we can value ourselves as GPs, but there's, there's, just, just, there's just one more thing I think we should actually, do you know, rather than pinning all our hopes on and all our um, objective on, on all our sense of purposes on continuity, I think we should actually look for something far more unique to us as GPs. Now, we all know that surgeons operate, but as GPs, our, our unique selling point is the way we communicate. I think that's far more unique and far more special for us and something we can all of us value and it's far more accessible and it's not exclusive in the same way that we think about continuity of care is. Now, over the last 
few decades, quite a few decades, there have been all sorts of Nobel Prize winning innovations out there that secondary care has adopted. Heart transplants, HIV treatments, um, helminth infections, all sorts of really, really clever innovations. But in general practice, we just don't embrace any of these. Yet yeah, actually, there are some fantastic innovations out there. In the last couple of decades, there have been Nobel Prizes in, in innovations that could really help general practice in, 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 in disciplines of behavioural economics, behavioural psychology, with people like um, Daniel Kahneman and Richard Teller. And there's all sorts of these different um, um, things that they've described, these biases, heuristics, common errors that human makes subconsciously all the time. And there are so many of these that lend themselves beautifully to general practice. There's the because justification, where it's shown that by hiding out in a library with a busy stack of notes, if you jump in front of the, the photocopier queue when it's really busy and you say, hey, can you let me in, please? You're, you've got an 80% chance of being told to go to the back. But if you say instead, repeat that, but instead say, hey, can you let me in, please? Because I've got something to photocopy. Well, that increases your chances now to 80% of being actually let in. The outcomes for the rest of the people in the queue and for yourself are drastically changed just by throwing in a very simple anodyne, benign justification. How often do patients do that to us? How often does a patient approach us and ask for diazepam because they're going to Tenerife? I don't know. We don't know in general practice because we haven't embraced these innovations. You've got innovations like the sunk cost fallacy, whereby um, it's known, it can be shown, that actually the more qualified you are, the less likely you are to change your mind when faced with compelling evidence against the decision you're making. And this, we can do this all the time in common life with, with relationships. We can be, we can be out there buying a house. We've, we, we've, we've um, had an expensive survey done. We've shown our family around. We've really invested time and emotion into this property. Next, next day, another property comes on the market next door. It's £10,000 cheaper. It's had a survey. It's got a, it's got a much nicer garden and a, and a, and a patio. And, and, but actually, because we've already invested time and money in the first option, we are much more likely to carry on down that first option in, in event of compelling evidence against that. How often do we do that as GPs? How often have we gone down a management plan or a therapeutic pathway and referral routes to think to ourselves, oh, blimey, wait a minute, that could actually be neurological. But do we change our mind or do we just carry on doing the same thing? I don't know. We don't know this because we don't have a look at this in general practice. And these are so, there are so many th things like this that we can, we can adopt. There's story bias. So actually, if, if we know the background to a patient and we know their story, that research shows then actually can just make us complacent. Um, and we actually do the actual facts coming out. We've actually got our story. We're quite happy with that. Thank you very much. How often have we done that to our patients that we've seen time after time? I don't know. We don't know because we don't research this in general practice. What about the fact that if patients don't seem grateful for what we're doing, are we subconsciously um, um, resenting that? Well, the research shows that, yeah, we probably are. What can we do about this in general practice? Because that's a problem. There are all sorts of doctor forums out there where we clearly resent our patients. Um, and is that healthy? I don't think it is. But what are we doing about it in general practice? Instead, we just seem to be talking about continuity of care and taking that for granted, actually, rather than doing anything more constructive about our values as GPs. Hindsight bias. How often do we hear about a colleague who's made a, a mistake, an error? And actually, in hindsight, well, yeah, of course, of course they shouldn't have made that referral. Of course they should have they should have done this or sent them in or whatever. We're much more likely to make that judgment in the because we've got um, um, new data. Um, um, we, the judgment we would have otherwise not made um, before any mistakes might have been made. How often do we do this in general practice? I don't know. We don't know because we're ignoring all these innovations and instead just hanging uh, uh, all our flags by the continuity of care. Confirmation bus, I'm not going to go on. There are all sorts of great innovations out there that have got, have got Nobel Prize winners behind them and that have got tons of research that we should be embracing in general practice. So rather than 
keep on going on about continuity of care, I think in general practice we should start to look at alternatives. Um, start to think about a new identity that we can value ourselves by as GPs. Not carrying on banging on about the same thing in the same way I'm banging on about this, but actually start embracing new innovations that are best practice that we, we know will work and that actually gives us a, 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 a very, very inclusive approach that's modern um, and, 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 and rather than trying to rely on something romantic that's actually just been setting ourselves up to fail. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this makes some sense. Please leave any comments. Please get in touch um, if you're already doing something in this respect. Please get in touch if you think I'm just got this completely wrong but I think this is a, de a debate we all need to have about general practice and to stop people like Jeremy Hunt saying that we should not have GP locums that everyone should be partners or salaried because locums can't do continuity that's ridiculous and that is never going to happen so why are we behind that and we need to change that thank you very much